like a bully, you don't stoop to their level. No, our motto is, when they go low, we go high. Michelle Obama famously called for the high road. It was appealing as an ethical argument, but it was also associated with the Obama family's unquestioned political success. Now, politics clearly rewarding a different approach. Donald Trump won the Electoral College with a lower road than a lot of people thought possible. In Trump's art of the deal, he states, when people treat me badly, my general attitude has been to fight back very hard. And we're about to explore that very point with co-author of that book, our friend Tony Schwartz. The issue today is that Trump's dirty approach is being rewarded and even mimicked. Now, Schwartz argues this is actually testing our values as a nation as we, rec as we reckon with a barrage of cruelty. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. On Carly Fiorina telling Rolling Stone, look at that face. Would anyone vote for that? Can you imagine that? The face of our next president. Maxine Waters, a very low IQ individual. Although we have a representative in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. They call her Pocahontas. When Trump is pressed on these comments, he'll often default to claiming these are jokes. Many people don't consider them funny, and they point out that even if it is a joke, he has power, and this is very cruel. The larger question we want to explore tonight, right now, is whether this style is eroding civility across the board. There was only, of course, politics in the reaction to this White House correspondence dinner moment. I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful. Like, she burns facts, and then she uses that ash to create a perfect smoky eye. We are graced with Sarah's presence tonight. I have to say, I'm a little starstruck. I love you as Aunt Lydia in The Handmaid's Tale. I'm joined by Tony Schwartz, CEO of The Energy Project. He is also the best-selling author of The Way We Work Is Not Working. Uh, and I want to explore with you not the predictable partisan overdrive reaction that was very blue-red, et cetera, to the comics, but the deeper point you're reaching towards, which is when cruelty is rewarded, what do we as a society do about it? Well, you know, I think what we've lost over the last two years in this Trump era is the recognition that our values are fundamentally the, the our embodied values, our lived values, are the content of our character. They are who we are. And two of the values we hold most dear, I think, or the most universal, are uh, honesty and compassion. And those two uh, are neither is represented in Trump. And I think that the problem is that he's dragged the, the dialogue and the focus on those two core values to a level that drags all of us with him. And that's my, that's my concern. And so, as you know, Tony, because you've worked more closely with him uh, in an expressive capacity writing the book than most people have, what he does, though, if I may, is he bastardizes the concept of honesty and says that he is actually just being more honest than others by saying, quote, unquote, the cruel things that other people really feel. And, and for that point, I want to play for you uh, one of his first forays into politics in New York City, where, where you are, with Ed Koch, where he went farther than most people would about the mayor in New York's tough enough rhetorical town. And then he said, but these are just my feelings. Like, I'm just being honest. Take a look. In the letter, I told Mr. Trump that I would not be granting him the tax exemptions that he desired. That letter aroused Mr. Trump's ire. We have uh, a gentleman in New York who's very disloyal every time. You're talking about the mayor of New York, aren't you? Well, I'm talking about the mayor of New York, yeah. yes. You call the mayor a moron. Is that any way to talk about a mayor, about it's another only, person? It's only expressing your feelings, and that's the way I feel. That's the way I feel. Um, how do you counter that sort of PC defense of what you call cruelty? Well, the, what, what binds us together as a civilized society, that's what gives, what civility serves, is 
the willingness, the capacity to be both truthful and compassionate and a number of other values. And without them, we lose our safety, our sense of safety, our sense of security, our sense of, of uh, trust in one another. And civilization doesn't hold together any more easily or naturally than democracy does. So when you begin to debase the most core values that every contemplative tradition has valued, we're, in a, we're at a point where we sit uh, faced with chaos and certainly at a minimum with a sense of fear and anxiety about what's going to happen next. Uh, and let me show for context on this because we were looking at it. Most people in the country, and this goes beyond party, think that the civility has gotten much worse since Trump took office. Very few people, in a world where people's facts are disagreeing about all kinds of political things, uh, very few people think it's the same or improved. Seventy percent, that includes obviously by definition many Trump voters, um, think it's worse. If we know it's getting worse, why does it also feel like we are to some degree powerless to change it? I mean, you go on the line and, and you look at even the way people criticize Trump and sometimes you say, gosh, we're all just in this trolling loop. Because the end justifies the means in a highly polarized world, in a highly polarized society. And so everything gets rationalized and, and minimized because the assumption is that so long as we're getting at the end of the day what we want, we can do almost anything. And what we don't realize is how much toll that takes on our humanity. Um, you know, every day, I go and talk with leaders, and one of the things I talk about is this notion, this core notion of the value as a leader of being both truthful and compassionate. Neither one, Ari, is, sim is sufficient by itself. Honesty, think about this, honesty, truthfulness, without compassion is actually cruelty. So you need right. these entailed values in order to be a whole human being. Donald Trump exemplifies neither honesty nor compassion. And the result there is chaos. And it's not just chaos in the way he leads. It's chaos in terms of the impact he has on us. Right. And what you're speaking about is that the nuance or the thing that you're supposed to get if you develop as a human being, which is, yes, you speak from a place of, of hopefully truth, but with consideration for the impact on other people. Sometimes that truth has to be channeled through your obligations to others. Tony, whenever we have you on, I feel like we should just add a little glass of Malbec, bring out, you know, some other, some other nice appetizers and really have this dinner conversation for longer. Yeah, I have yeah, to fit in should, a break. We should chill. I'm sorry I'm not there uh, in, the, in, the, in the promised land with you. So I'm used to being <laughs> right next to you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.